What's up, Cream Heist? Welcome to another Criminology Educational Video. And for today, we will be discussing Fundamentals of Criminal Investigation and Intelligence. So before we start our discussion, let me introduce myself. I am Sean Francis Sandego, also known as The Professor. So before we jump into our discussion, let us first know what to expect or kung ano yung mga dadaanan nating topics in this video discussion. So first is the investigation procedures upon arrival at the crime scene. So usually these are investigative protocols na ginagawa ng mga investigators or ng mga law enforcement authorities upon their arrival or um, upon na sila ay nakarating doon sa crime scene. Second is crime scene search and photographing the crime scene. Third is sketching the crime scene. And the last one is the investigative report writing. So first, let's go to the investigation procedure at the crime scene. So first is upon arrival at the crime scene, receive the crime scene from the first responder. So as we all know, or usually, ang mga nagiging first responder kasi kalimitan ay yung mga patrol officers. So usually, pag gaganyan, kailangan magkaroon ng proper coordination at proper uh, transfer ng crime scene from the first responder going in or uh, giving in to the a proper investigation team or investigation unit. Record the time or date of the arrival at the crime scene. So, kailangan i-record kung anong oras ka exactly nakarating sa crime scene, ano ang location or saan ang location ng crime scene, ano ang condition ng weather upon your arrival at the crime scene, condition and type of lighting, maliwanag ba or madilim, direction of wind and visibility. Third is, uh, photograph and or video the entire crime scene. So usually, uh, dito sa photographing and video uh, recording ng entire crime scene is yung, kumbaga yung labas lang or yung binibigyan lang ng general view um, with regards to kung ano ang situation sa crime scene. Fourth is, before entering the crime scene, all investigators must put on surgical gloves. So, of course, para maiwasan na makapag-iwan sila ng fingerprint patterns doon sa crime scene as well as para maiwasan din yung contamination ng mga evidence. Next, before touching or moving any object at the crime scene in a homicide or murder case, determine first the status of the victim, whether he is still alive or already dead. So, you uh, uh, of course, very important yan in homicide investigation. Of course, you have uh, to bury papers kung patay talaga yung tao or yung dead uh, or yung body na natagpuan mo sa crime scene. Of course, you still have to verify kung humihinga pa ba yan or hindi. Next, designate a member of the team or ask other policemen or responsible persons to stand watch and secure the scene and permit only authorized persons to enter the scene. So usually naman sa crime scene, pagka upon receiving yan or upon reporting, talagang nilalagyan na yan ng cordon or yung cordon tape para maano agad yung crime scene ma uh, iwasan na na makapasok yung mga hindi naman talaga authorized persons or usually yung mga chismoso-chismosa lang or mga nakikiusosero uh, at posisera lang. 7. Identify and retain for questioning the person who first notified the police and other possible witnesses. So it is very important na uh, alamin kung sino yung nag-report sa police station or sa law enforcement authorities as well as other witnesses for interview or for questioning. Determine the assailant through injury or observe him if his identity is immediately apparent. Arrest him if he is still in the vicinity. Separate witnesses in order to get independent statements. So, protocol talaga yan na yung mga witnesses pinag walay Kasi minsan, sa sobrang kabaren or yung anxiety rin na nararamdaman ng mga witnesses, usually nagtatanungan yung mga yan. And pag nagtanungan na yan, makukontaminate na or maiiba na yung statements at maaaring maging iisa na lang yung statements nila which uh, importante kasi na malay mo yung itong isang witness na to may important na nakita na hindi nakita nung isa. But since si witness A is gullible or uh, kumbaga yung kanyang um, kung baga kinakaban siya or meron siyang anxiety, therefore, mas naniwala siya kay witness number, uh, letter B na, oo, ganito yung nangyari. So, therefore, makokontaminate na yung kung ano yung meron sa nakita niya. Next is recording. 
the investigator begins the process of recording pertinent facts and details of the investigation the moment he arrives at the crime scene. Di ba, upon arrival at the crime scene, kailangan agad niya i-record kung ano yung exact time and date upon his arrival, yung location, yung direction of the wind, the condition of lighting, so yun pa lang, uh, nagre-record na siya. He also writes down the identification of persons involved and what he initially saw. He also draw a basic sketch of the crime scene and takes the initial photograph. If a photographer is available, avail his services. This is to ensure that an image of the crime scene is recorded before any occurrences that disturbs the scene. So it is very important na magkaroon ng uh, basic sketch and also yung photograph ng uh, initial uh, situation ng crime scene bago uh, sila mag-interlude or bago sila mag-intervene. So para makita na ito talaga yung uh, situation ng crime scene upon their arrival. As a rule, do not touch, alter, or remove anything at the crime scene until the evidence has been processed through notes, sketches, and photographs with proper measurement. So, ibig sabihin, the investigators cannot touch anything, alter anything, move anything, or remove anything hanggat ito ay hindi pa na nalilista sa notes kung saan ang uh, specific location, hindi pa siya na sketch or na drawing at hindi pa siya na pipicturan. It is true that the investigating team must give priority to human life. Nevertheless, they must exhaust whatever means to secure and preserve the crime scene for it contains all the necessary ingredients for the prosecution of the case. So, ibig sabihin daw, ang pinaka-priority ng investigator is yung human life. So, if for example, uh, may naghihingalong tao doon sa loob ng crime scene, so, mas uunahin nila na isave or priority nila na mas masave yung naghihingal ng tao kesa sundin yung mga protocols. But as much as possible, they need to exhaust whatever they need or kung ano yung man yung mga tamang dapat gawin to secure and preserve the crime scene. As such, they must reconsider the necessary steps in order to collect all available evidence and maintain the integrity of the crime scene by remembering the MAC rule which simply stand for Mutilate alter and contamination. When we say mutilate, meaning do not remove anything from the crime scene. Alter, do not change the position or anything in the crime scene. And contamination, do not add anything to the crime scene. So, para mas matandaan natin, mutilate, magtanggal, bawal magtanggal, alter, bawal magpalit, at contamination, bawal magdagdag. Also, the investigating team must remember that nothing should be touched, altered, or removed unless everything is photographed, note, noted, measured, and indicated in the sketch as these are the golden rule in the processing of the crime scene. So, we mentioned ko na yan kanina. They should also take into consideration those transient evidence or fragile evidence. Transient evidence or fragile evidence will be discussed later on. So, ito, transient evidence, ito yung mga ebidensya which, when not collected at appropriate time, may diminish or lose its value. So, for example, ihe, dugo, or semen, pagka yan, hindi agad na kolekta agad-agad, matutuyo yan. On the other hand, fragile evidence are those evidence which may be broken if collected inattentively. So, si transient evidence, ito yung uh, crucial dito yung time of collection kasi pagka hindi agad siya na kolekta, maaring matuyo siya, such as yung dugo nga, uh, ihe, or semen. Tapos yung fragile evidence naman, ito yung mga ebidensya na kailangan may extra care in collecting the evidence because pagka hindi ka nagkaroon ng extra care, maaari siyang masira. Now, let's go to the methods of crime scene search. So, this is very important. The first one is the strip search method. So, ito yung strips or search method, or yung tinatawag natin na line or strip search. So, dito sa method na to, the area is blacked out in the form of a rectangle. So, may tatlong searcher na sabay-sabay sila at the same pace along paths parallel to one side of the rectangle. When a piece of evidence is found, the finder announces his discovery and the search must stop until the evidence has been cared for. So, ibig sabihin, itong tatlong searchers na to, si A, B, and C, sabay-sabay silang uh, iikot dito sa crime scene in a parallel way or in a line way or strip way and then same pace and pag, for example si uh, searcher A nakakita siya ng evidence so si B and C titigil siya 
and aantayin niya na makolekta at ma-preserve yung evidence, then tsaka sila magpapatuloy. A photographer is called if necessary, the evidence is collected, and tag and the search proceeds at a given signal. At the end of the rectangle, the searchers turn and proceed along new lanes as shown into the above illustration. So, kung makikita natin dito, isang, tatlo silang paderecho dito, and then after nyan, pabaliktad naman. Now, let's go to the double strip or grid search method. Dito naman, parehas lang siya ng uh, strip method. Sadyang, uh, pagkatapos niya dito sa uh, pa-parallel or rather pa-vertical, pakabila naman siya, pa-horizontal. So, the double strip or grid method of search is a modification of the strip search. Dito sa rectangle na to, it is traverse first parallel to the base, then parallel to a side. So, for example, kung uuna siya ng pa-horizontal, uh, pag natapos na nila horizontal way, pa-vertical naman sila. Now, let's go to the spiral search method. So, yung spiral, alam naman natin, parang whirl or yung paikot. So, this is done when the area to be searched is circular in nature. In this method, the three searchers follow each other along the path of a spiral, beginning on the outside and spiraling in towards the center. So, it is, this is very important. Ang spiral search method, una siya sa palabas, papalo, papaloob, papasok. Okay? Now, let's go to the zone method or zone search method. Itong uh, zone search method, hinahati niya yung crime scene into quadrants. So, four quadrants. And this is best applicable if it is covering a wider range of crime scene. In this method, one searcher is assigned to each subdivision of a quadrant. And then, each quadrant is cut into another set of quadrants. So, kung makikita natin dito sa picture na to, yung crime scene, hinati siya sa apat. And then, yung uh, quadrant or subdivision, hinati pa siya ulit sa apat. And dito sa pinakamalit na rectang uh, na square, isang searcher ang uh, assign dyan. So, in uh, one subdivision of quadrant, may apat na searcher. So, kung makikita natin dito, 16 searchers ang kailangan dito. Now, let's go to the wheel search method. This method is applicable in circular areas, similar with the spiral method. The searchers gather at the center and proceed outward along radii or spokes. The procedure should be repeated in several times depending on the size or rather on the size of the circle and the number of searchers. So, dito naman kay wheel search method, mula pa pa loob, pa, pa palabas. Okay? So, ito yung ano niya. So, mula dito sa gitna, tapos pakalat sila palabas. Okay? Yan, para siyang pie. Next, let's go to the collecting, marking, tagging, and preserving evidence. So, after the search of an evidence, collection follows. However, any object found must be properly marked, tagged, photographed, measured, and indicated in a sketch before its actual collection. So, once na uh, makakita na sila ng ebidensya, kailangan ito muna ay mamarkahan, matag, mapicturan, mamessured, masukatan, and mailagay muna sa drawing bago siya kolektahin. Collection of evidence refers to the actual gathering and lifting of evidence from the crime scene to the custody of the appropriate office. During crime scene processing, it is important that the investigating officer is knowledgeable on the proper collection and handling of evidence. Kasi in each and every type of evidence, meron niyang different way of collection. In collecting physical evidence, so first is collection of liquid substances or blood. Place the sample in a container, avoiding air space because air will cause the blood to dry. So, usually, yung mga liquids na dadry yan through air. If the amount of blood is minimal, collection may best made by placing the sample in a normal saline solution. So, one, uh, yung saline solution is a 1 tablespoon salt in 1 quart of distilled water. Refrigerate the same in saline solution as soon as possible. Do not mix areas where samples are collected. Next is collecting of dried blood. So, an absorbent surface brings, uh, bring in the entire object or cut out the strain area and bring them to the laboratory. So, usually, pagka nakita natin yung dried blood is nasa uh, damit, so, gugupitin natin yung part ng damit na merong dugo. And ito yung dadali mismo sa laboratory. 
on non-absorbent surface, scrape up the sample and place in a container or possible submit the entire article. If the sample is scraped from the surface, also scrape a portion of the surface where no blood is present and submit in a separate container for control in case some substance on the surface cause difficulty in test. So, para lang may pagkumparahan. Next is collection of wet blood in clothing. Do not fold the clothing as it may destroy the stain pattern. Do not package while the stain is wet. Allow the clothing to dry before packaging. Do not expose to sunlight or high temperature as they may destroy factors which will determine the blood typing. Next is marking of evidence. Etong marking of evidence, it refers to the process of identifying and recognizing any objects in the crime scene by, the way, by way of placing letter, symbol, or number. An evidence is collected, it is individ uh, individually marked with the initials of the investigator. The marking tool depends upon the nature of the evidence. It is a hard object such as metals. The initials are scratched or engraved by the use of sharp pointed steel called stylus. As to tagging of evidence, ito yung process ng uh, pag-label na ng physical evidence by way of placing appropriate evidence tags containing the description of the item, the date, and the initial of the collecting officer. When the evidence, which by nature could not be marked on each surface, uh, kasi diba sa mga metals, ine-engrave siya. So, pagka hindi siya mamarkahan dun sa mismong uh, evidence, such as blood, hairs, fibers, they are placed in a plastic container, then marked. This practice is called tagging the physical evidence with the use of a card where the initials of the investigator, date and time of collection, specific case, and other information can be written. Next is preserving the physical evidence. Mga perishable materials should be preserved along the way or the preservation is in order to reach the court in the same physical condition as when they were collected from the crime scene. This is the work of the laboratory technician. Now, let's go to the photographing of evidence. Paano ba pinipicturan yung mga ebidensya? So, in photographing, uh, photographing the crime scene, the crime scene photography is one of the most important duties that the crime scene investigator performs. Visual communications are sustained, uh, substantial, and verified by quality, concise, and accurate photographs of both the scene and the evidence at its, as it was found. Photography of the scene and of evidence is one of the first procedures performed at a scene. This generally occurs after the taking note process has begun. So, bakit ba napaka-importante ng photographing the crime scene or in relation to investigation? Because it, prov uh, it provides the intricate details of the crime scene or kung ano yung mismong sitwasyon ng crime scene. Take the photograph so that the area and items of evidence will be identified and oriented with other areas in the overall scene. The technique used at crime scene is primarily a three-step process. A long or wide-angle view, sometimes referred to as an establishing shot. A medium or mid-range view which focuses on particular objects, areas, or evidence items. And of course, the close-up view that clearly shows what the item is, its condition, and its position at the scene. So, itong a long or wide-angle view, usually, at, for example, ang crime scene yung bahay. So, this is the picture of the house. Ito yung wide or angle view. Yung medium or mid-range view, yung particular place doon sa bahay, which is kung kunyari sa kwarto nangyari. So, yun yung mid-range or medium view. And yung close-up view, is, uh, usually, ito yung mga picture ng mga... Injuries incurred by the corpse or uh, yung mga uh, kagamitan na maaring ginamit in killing the person. Photograph all collected evidence at its original location. An extreme close-up photograph may be taken of a small item such as blood stain, hair, fabric stain, or fingerprint in blood. For an extreme close-up shot, the item should be photographed at least twice. Once with a scale or ruler, at least one without a scale. So, sa extreme close-up daw, dalawang beses, with a ruler and without a ruler. Investigators should use rulers and markers at crime scenes to identify items or areas being photographed. The markers may become uh, may be cones 
uh, with uh, comes with number or letters affixed to the co uh, cone, plastic evidence cards or index cards which have been marked identifying the evidence being photographed. When using markers, take a photograph of the object or area with and without marker. When evidence has been identified as having been moved from its original position at the crime scene, the investigator should make note of that. If the investigator is directed to photograph the evidence item in its original location, a detailed note should be made that the item was photographed in the area where it was originally located. Now let's go to the sketching the crime scene or sketching of the crime scene. Sketch is the graphic representation of the scene of the crime with complete measurements of the relative distances of relevant objects and conditions. Crime scene sketches are one of the foundations of crime scene investigation. Crime scene sketches are still considered a valuable tool of scene documentation and case investigation use. But before beginning a sketch, the investigator should have a comprehensive view of the scene and decide the limitations of the sketch, which uh, consists of what to include and what not to include. Sketch, diagram, and drawing are terms used interchangeably. So it's either sketch and tawag, diagram, or drawing. They refer to a handmade pictorial representation of conditions at the crime scene. So there are four main types of sketches, the floor plan, Elevation Drawing, Exploded View, and Perspective Drawings. So, unahin natin si uh, most commonly uses of sketching include record the location and relationship of evidence or yung connection ng evidence from one another, refresh memory of the investigator, supplement other records, eliminate confusing and unnecessary details, assist later understanding of the crime scene, assist in questioning of suspects or witnesses, Assist in correlating testimony of witnesses. Bakit? Because ang sketch nga sinasabi dito kanina is nagpo-provide siya ng reconstruction ng crime scene. Now, let's go to the procedures on making a sketch. To establish the admissibility of the sketch, the investigator must have personal observation of the data in question. In other words, the sketch must be sponsored or verified. Reminder, Sketches are not a sub uh, substitute for notes or photos. They are but a supplement to them. So, ibig sabihin, supporting document or for verification purposes is sketch to support the investigator's notes and the photographs. The general kinds of sketch, first is yung rough sketch. So, yung rough sketch, it is made by the investigator at the crime scene, which is full of important details. But without the scale of proportion, this is used as the basis for a finished sketch. Ske changes should not be made to it after the sketcher has left the scene. So, ibig sabihin si rough sketch, so para mas madali nating maintindihan, si rough sketch, ito yung sketch na ginawa in the crime scene by the investigator spontaneously. So, ibig sabihin kung ganun, wala pa tong proper uh, scaling of proportion as well as hindi pa siya yung pinaka-finished sketch. This is just the rough sketch. Ito yung kumbaga paunang sketch during the crime scene. etong smooth or finished sketch, ito yung uh, kumbaga maayos na siyang sketch or detailed sketch na siya from the rough sketch. Ito na yung uh, drone with scale from the information provided by the rough sketch. Yung rough sketch and finish sketch, uh, finish sketch are uh, for the courtroom presentation. So, dapat kung ano lang yung meron dun sa rough sketch, yun lang din ang meron doon kay finish sketch. It's, it's just that, mas maayos, mas presentable lang, and with um, scaling of proportions na itong finish sketch. Floor plan, bird's eye view sketch. So, ito yung simplest and most common one used in diagramming the crime scene. It may be used in all crime scene situations where the items of interest are located in one place. So, itong floor plan or bird's eye view sketch, kumbaga, ito yung usually ginagamit sa mga, or, or most simplest and most common use in diagramming the crime scene. Ba't siya tinawag na bird's eye view sketch? Kasi, parang from the perspective na nasa taas siya, na nakatingin ka doon sa baba, which is yung crime scene. Crime scene, rather. Next is yung cross projection or exploded. It is a sketch that uses the combination of the floor plan and four elevation views, or yung the walls, of the room. The walls and ceiling place on one of the walls. The purpose of this type of sketch is to show points of interest on the walls and floors. 
So, dito para lang ma-emphasize yung walls and floors ng bahay. Next is elevation drawing sketch. So, for the elevation of drawing sketch, this elevation sketch depicts a side, front or rear of the exterior of a structure or one of the interior walls in a room used when the vertical rather than a horizontal plane is of interest. If the blood stain are present on a wall of the house, the elevation drawing of the wall would be used to depict the scene. So, dito kasi sa elevation, nakikita dito yung height differences uh, nung structure ng bahay. It may be exterior or interior. Next is types of measurements. In types of measurement, nandiyan si triangulation method. Uh, an object is located by drawing two straight lines from two fixed points, creating a triangle. The triangulation method is useful in an outdoor situation where there are no easily identified edges of roads or fields to use as a reference point. Measurement follows the shape of a triangle. So, triangulation method usually ginagamit siya in outdoor situation. Okay? Kung saan wala silang magagamit na reference points such as the edges of the road or the fields. Next is yung coordinate or uh, uh, angular or rectangular coordinates method. This method uses two walls in a room as fixed points from which distances are measured at right angles. The baseline could be the wall or drawn as the mathematical center of a room. So, dito naman kay coordinate or angular or rectangular method, ang ginagamit yung fixed point dito is yung two walls of the room kung saan yung distansya were measured at the right angles. Dito naman kay baseline method, a straight line is established from one fixed point to another fixed point. Using one end of the line as starting point, an object can be located by measuring along either side of the baseline at a right angle to the object. Next is compass point method or polar coordinates. A protractor is used to measure the angle between two lines. One point along a wall is selected as the origin. An axis line drawn from the origin is the line from which the angle is measured. So, para mas madali nating maintindihan, si baseline method ito. So, from the one wall, gagamit siya ng uh, right angle to measure the object. Okay, uh, triangulation method naman, ito yung sa outside or outdoor situation kung saan wala silang magagamitan na coordinate or uh, kumbaga yung pinaka starting point. Ito naman kay rectangular coordinates, gagamit siya ng uh, rectangle. And kay, um, yung pinakahuli nating diniscuss si compass point method, ito yon So, from one line, which is the reference point, and then the end point would be the uh, center of the knife or the object being measured. Now, let's go to our last discussion, which is the investigative report writing. So, the definition of terms first. First is the investigative report writing. Ito yung reduction of facts into writing in line with the investigation conducted by any law enforcement agencies to serve as a reference that will guide future endeavors to any matters that may have logically connection to the case under investigation, undercover operation, court proceeding, or any law enforcement activity. So, dito, ito lang yung simpleng pagsulat with, of course, a certain format um, uh, of the facts of the case or of facts of in the crime scene na maaaring magamit as a reference of the investigator in future use. Second is police blotter. It is a record or log of everyday events occurring within the territory's jurisdiction of a given police unit or command. It contains the material details concerning the event for legal and statistical purposes. It is also where all types of operations and undercover dispatch shall be recorded containing the five W's and one H of information. So, dito kay police blotter, ito yung mga nire-report sa kanila or everyday occurrence in their area of jurisdiction. And usually, mali maikli lang kay police blotter. Kailangan lang dito nakakontain yung five W and one H, which is the essential facts of the occurrence or the circumstances. Now, let's go to the investigative reporting. It is an objective statement of the investigator's finding. It is an official record of information relevant to the investigation which the investigator submits to his or her superior. Dito sa investigative writing, uh, reporting, ito na yung uh, report uh, na ginagawa ni investigator on what is his finding in his course of 
um, investigation. Kung baga, nandito na yung pinaka-summary ng kanyang findings sa kanyang investigation. Next is communication. The use of language spoken or written to exchange of ideas or transfer information. Si investigative report writing is uh, one of uh, a platform of communication. Of course, through writing or through written. Next is report. It is a detailed account of an event, situation, usually based on observation or in inquiry. Next, reporting is knowingly passing along information to someone else. You have the information, you want it to pass to other people that is reporting. Report writing, ito naman yung communication that lends itself to a useful tool for people in a free society to express their thoughts and ideas to obtain what they need or want. So, di ba si report? You have the information, you pass it to someone through orally, that is a report. As to report writing, you want to pass it, uh, but it is uh, through written. So, kailangan uh, gagamit ka or susulat ka ng information na alam mo that you want to share to other people. Fact, it is anything which either through careful observation or investigation has been proven to exist as to have happened. So, ibig sabihin, these are inform information that, it, that is verified. So, alam mo totoo. Hindi chismis-chismis or haka-haka lang or hindi siya, uh, obs uh, kumbaga hindi lang siya opinion. Note-taking, it is defined as a brief notation concerning specific events that are recorded while fresh in your mind and used to prepare a report. So, si note-taking, this is very important in investigative report writing as this will serve as the major reference kung paano ka gagawa ng report mo. Because si note-taking, ito yung actual na pagsusulat mo during ikaw ay nasa crime scene. Na ito yung nakita mo, ito yung isusulat mo. And it will help you in formulating your report. Next is chronological order. Ito yung arrangement ng events or, uh, or in order by time of their occurrence or pagkakasunod-sunod ng mga pangyayari. Next is investigation. It is the collection of facts to accomplish a threefold aim. Of course, the three I, to identify the suspect, to locate the suspect, and to prove the evidence of his guilt. Next is yung investigator or officer. Shall refer to any law enforcement personnel belonging to the duly mandated law enforcement agencies tasked to enforce RA-9208 such as officers, investigators, and agents of the PNP and NBI. Now let's go to the importance of investigative reporting. Bakit ba importante ito? Of course, it serves as a record for police administration in planning, directing, and organizing the unit's duty. Report can be used as legal documents in prosecution of criminals. Reports can be used by other agencies. Reports can be useful to local media which needs access to public documents. The author of a report should also consider that his or her written work is reflective of his personality. And report can be basis for research. Next, what are the requisites or requirements of a good investigation report? First is accuracy. Ibig sabihin, dapat yung report mo shall uh, represent the true facts. Information both favorable and unfavorable to the suspect should be included. Information should be verified by statements of other witnesses and by reference to the official records or to the reliable sources. So, ibig sabihin, accuracy, tama yung, uh, kumbaga, verified and accurate yung mga report or facts na nilagay mo dun sa report mo. Completeness. Kailangan kompleto yan ng 5W and 1H. It should answer the 5W and 1H. Brevity. Irrelevant or unnecessary material should be omitted. So, dapat yung mga irrelevant information na hindi naman siya connected o hindi naman siya makakatulong doon sa investigation or are not really connected or important should be removed. So, kumbaga, uh, nakalagay lang talaga doon is yung mga importanteng bagay. Fairness, the investigator should take the facts as he finds them. If ever he has the theories, it must be consistent with these facts. So, sabi nga diba sa accuracy, it may be favorable to or unfavorable to the accused kailangan or to the suspect, dapat yan ay nakalagay sa report mo. Form and style, the arrangement of the materials present should be in a manner which will make the report easy to read. So, kailangan simplicity lang. Madaling basahin, maiintindihan ang lahat. 
The report should be written in a third person, the investigator referring to him or herself as the investigator. Next, clarity. The language and format of a report are simple and to straight to the point. Specific. You have to use specific words that bring the reader close to the first-hand experience. So, kung baga pa habang binabasa ito ng reader, parang siya ay nandun na mismo sa crime scene. Timeliness. Of course, completion of report should be timely or promptly. Next is basic types of investigation report. First is spot report. Or, kung baga on the spot report. It is the immediate initial investigative or incident report. Address to higher higher headquarters pertaining to the commission of the crime, occurrence of natural or man-made disaster, or unusual incidents involving loss of lives and damage to properties. So, si spot report or into yung tinatag natin initial report. Next is a progress report. It is an accounting of the actions or series of actions undertaken in relation to an ongoing investigation of a case. Si progress report, ito yung tinatawag natin na follow-up report. Kung baga, uh, in the course of the investigation, ito pa yung mga reports na ginawa because ito pa yung mga actions na ginawa. So, in every action, kailangan yan shall be undertaken into a report. Next is after operation report. Ito yung tinatawag natin na final report. It is a report that may be rendered after any successful police operation that leads to the arrest of any member or, or some members of a syndicated crime group. Next is yung final report. It is the thorough, in-depth, and lengthy account regarding investigation into an incident or case as mandated by higher authorities to establish a determination of the truth or how far it could be determined based on the facts and circumstances with the appropriate recommendation for the proper courses of actions to be made. So this is a sample of a spot report or yung initial report. So thank you very much and I do hope that you learned a lot from this video discussion. If you love this video, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the professor and hit the notification bell for you to be updated for my next video upload. So thank you very much and see you on my next one.